Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Jana Kolar and I'm Executive Director of Seric Eric, a research infrastructure. It's my privilege to moderate this panel on excellence and inclusiveness. We'll um, explore how to overcome the somewhat artificial dichotomy between the two. We'll also address how the European Union and its neighborhood gain from a more inclusive research and innovation policy. Dear audience, I invite you to post your question on Slido, mentioning who they're for. Also, please react to the questions that you like with thumbs up. Please also post the chat in the comments. You're surely familiar with the platform by now. Without further ado, I'm delighted to announce the speakers of the session. Uh, we have with us Maria Gabriel, European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Maria Oliver, European Commissioner for Neighborhood and Enlargement. Paolo Ferrao, the President of COST, and Indra Kaiman, Deputy Secretary General at the, Ministry, uh, at the Ministry of Education, Research and Research in Estonia. Welcome. Commissioner Gabriel, why do we need a comprehensive widening strategy that goes beyond the traditional funding program? Thank you very much, Professor Kolar. It's a great pleasure for me to be here together with my fellow colleague, Commissioner Vergeli, and all the other participants. We know each other, so thank you very much for your contribution today. I would like to start by saying since the beginning that when we are referring about a widening strategy, we are referring to something positive. It is about improving access to excellence and uh, strengthening co collaborations. Because I fully believe that as Europe in the domain of research and innovation, we can strive if everyone progresses. And that's why it's so important that we all together, we work in order to have strong research innovation players working together in all our member states. Because actually that's a fact. The RNI divide among member states in Europe is larger than the gap in all the other economic indicators such as GDP or capital employment or productivity. And this innovation divide makes it difficult for Europe in general to progress in this field. We have some assets, we have experience. That's why for me, the, 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 the today's discussion, it's a great opportunity to see what we already have as an experience, what are our good examples. And we have here excellent participants to remind us that thanks to Horizon Europe, we have very good examples of this cooperation with the error teaming, with the error chairs. We have great, great examples. But now the question is how we can answer to this reality by tackling together these new challenges. That's why for me what is important is that together we can identify on the base of our experiences what are the main challenges and what are the concrete instruments that we have at our disposal in order to provide solutions. Because when we talk about research and innovation, when we talk about excellence and inclusiveness, it's the two sides of the same coin. But here, we are talking here about our talents, about the capacity of all our member states to, to, to make Europe a real leader in this, in this field. And that's why I would like to underline that with this widening 2.0 strategy, we would like to propose a, not only a policy which is based on our actual instruments in Horizon Europe, but to go further, to see how we can build synergies with the other instruments, with the different funds, how we can really help our talented people to choose Europe, to, stay, to choose their regions and to thrive. And that's why I think that we have now some very concrete examples for the next period. Of course, first very good signal, we have the widening part in Horizon Europe. You know very, very well that thanks to the negotiations with the European Parliament, the message is that the budget dedicated to these actions will be 3.3% of the entire budget. So that's tripling the budget actually that, that we have. That means that we need this time to insist on the impact, on efficiency, and how really the, the, to, to make some of our actions more scalable 
touching more people, giving more access. That's why for me, excellence will always stay at the core of our policies. But we need to allow access to excellence in order to build strong partnerships, strong collaborations, and to allow all our innovators, all our researchers and talented people to show us the potential of their ideas and their projects. And together with, with my team, we are thinking about six main objectives in this new widening 2.0 strategy. It's, of course, to continue to work on the institutional development. We know that the biggest part of these policies are in the hands of our member states. We need to support them with structural reforms, with public investments. But we need to work on connectivity. That's something very, very important. Capacity building, of course. But we need to continue to work on talent attraction. We need to continue on the work on links between science and business. We know how much we need that to translate our excellent scientific results in innovative products and services that help our regions and our citizens. And of course, synergies, synergies with the other policies. But my question today is how this time we can not only use these beautiful words, synergies, about how we can implement them, how we can operationalize these, these good intentions. So you can see a broad discussion with a lot of questions, but I'm, I fully believe that we have at least already a good basis of good answers, of good practices, of good examples. Now the question is to continue to discuss this in a very open ma manner together with you, with our member states, with our main st stakeholders. And that's why I very much appreciate the opportunity that we have in this panel to identify solutions, to use RNI days, not only as a call for action, as I already said it yesterday, but especially as an opportunity to identify together solutions, to provide adequate instruments, and above all, really giving a chance to all our talents not only to dream about the realization of their projects, but to give them concrete support to do this in their regions, in Europe, in their countries. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gabriel, for uh, this introductory talk, uh, focusing also on how to build on the past experiences and how to implement the synergies, which are over around us, underexploited. Commissioner Vareli, science and innovation can be a bridge builder in regions suffering from political tensions. How can we uh, valorize the potential in eastern periphery of the European Union? Well, first of all, dear Commissioner Gabriel, dear Maria, uh, thank you for uh, having me here. Um, I think this is a unique opportunity and the timing couldn't have been better. We are working on a major economic development plan, <clears throat> both for the Western Balkans, but also uh, for the Eastern neighborhood. Because the single biggest common challenge that we face in the Western Balkans, but also in the, the Eastern Partnership countries, is the major economic development gap between the European Union and them. Uh, we see that uh, structural changes are necessary to increase their global competitiveness. They suffer from high unemployment, while on the other hand uh, suffering the, the impact of brain drain. And this all contributes to a further weakening of their economy, instead of building a more resilient, knowledge-based, future-proof economy. But the COVID pandemic only added uh, to this problem of ours. So now we take the challenge, uh, coming in the next couple of weeks, and we try to come forward with a very meaningful, yet down-to-earth, economic development plan that should bring growth and jobs to the region, uh, hopefully still under the mandate of this commission. The plan will set out a major investment package for the entire region, it will have a regional approach, meaning regional participation and regional benefits. It will be focusing on connectivity, the green and digital transition, based on a knowledge-based economy that we are here to build. 
And of course, for that, we need to develop a competitive, innovation-oriented private sector. So we work together with uh, my fellow commissioner, Maria, to make this happen and to bring this as fast as we can to the region, because the region has an immense potential and the perfect uh, zone for investment also when I look at uh, the recovery after the COVID crisis. <clears throat> we plan to significantly increase our financial support and leverage as well, also through increasing the grants. The grants that are so important after the recovery. And we also coupled this with an important guarantee package, which should also be there to mobilize private investments. We need both public and private investments to drive the same way and to create the economy, um, the future-proof economy together with them. When we are talking about the economy, of course, one cannot create a competitive economy without the small fabric, but the biggest part, which is the SME sector. In the Western Balkans, we are missing uh, this fabric and we are here to create that. For that, we need innovative uh, companies, we need startups, we need innovation hubs uh, to help us develop a new SME fabric for, the, uh, for these countries. To ensure that the investment is led by research and innovation, we need to create uh, growth and jobs also in these sectors. And we will be coordinating our efforts on this. And you will see, I think, when you will find the plan on your tables, that we invest a lot in areas where innovation is key. In that, the first joint project that we are having is the EU for Tech project, which should help also the, technical, the technology transfer, because this is the next step. It's not enough to innovate, it's not enough to research, but we have to have innovation that works for the economy, that will actually contribute to, eco to the economic growth, and that will create new products, new services, new trade opportunities, and new investment possibilities. To benefit from our support, of course, we need also the partners to step, to step up their efforts and to create the right climate for these investments, meaning going further and further with their reform efforts and creating all the necessary enabling conditions uh, for these companies to flourish, be it the rule of law, be it taxation, uh, be it uh, other areas of economic development, uh, but the right conditions have to be there in sync with the investment plan. Uh, we also need to focus on the youth of this region. We're losing the youth of the region, although they're working for our member states, but the region is getting weaker and weaker by the fact that the youth is leaving. Normally, we talk about a region of 18 million people, but this is not the case anymore. Uh, I have been listening to different figures. The lowest I heard was 13 million. I would say we are in the region of 15, 16 million people left in the region. We need to re-attract the youth by creating the right conditions, by investing into broadband energy net, uh, uh, internet networks, by linking up the capitals with highways and railways, and by providing the necessary uh, uh, framework for having the right skills. Because this is the big challenge in the region, that we have a clear skill mismatch so that we will have skills that the economy needs uh, to flourish. Now, of course, uh, we are in dialogue with our Western uh, Balkan partners and the economic reform programs that they are putting on the table are already reflecting these priorities to some extent. But we want to give a new push uh, through the plan so that we can make this happen already starting from next year. Now, if I turn to our Eastern Partnership uh, partners, I see the exact same challenges. We need to establish a resilient economy. We need to bring new growth. We need to re-attract the youth 
and we need to have sustainable growth uh, brought forward in the region. This is why we are renewing now the Eastern Partnership priorities. You may have seen that on the last day, right before uh, the lockdown, on the 18th of March, the Commission has adopted a revision uh, of the Eastern Partnership priorities, and we are now working with our partners how to implement this into action. We have reached out to all the, all the prime ministers of the region, just like we did uh, in the Western Balkans, and we are waiting for their ideas. But the priorities are the same. The right skills, innovation-based economy, SMEs, uh, startups, innovation hubs. These are, these are the things we need to have in place. And actually, if I look at other examples in Europe, these are not so difficult if we really put our minds to it. So we are working together with, uh, with Maria, and uh, we are, I think I can speak on, on, our, on both of our behalfs that uh, we are very hopeful that this will bring major change to both of these regions. Um. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Varely. Uh, thank you also for emphasizing the need to work together with uh, uh, Commissioner Gabriel to develop innovations, but then also to support the innovation uh, system in a way that will allow these innovations to reach the market and make the uh, neighborhood economies more resilient. At this point, I would like to ask the audience again to ask your questions on Slido. Thank you very much. To Professor uh, Fehao, if we presume that excellence is distributed everywhere, what are successful mechanisms to connect pockets of it and to better valorize the pooled resources? Good, uh, good morning. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, good morning to the commissioners. Good morning to the colleagues. Uh, of course, I would like first to, on the behalf of COST, to thank very much for this very honorable invitation to be here. It's a great pleasure uh, to be with you. And regarding the very important question, let me say that uh, I believe that when we connect the pockets of excellence, we are actually weaving the EU R&D fabric. And that is, after all, the making of the European research area. So in doing this, we are building up on the success of the national efforts and accelerating research and innovation performance, and thereby boosting European competitiveness and inclusiveness growth. It is the only way forward. As the Commissioner Gabriel just mentioned, the era can only strive towards more excellence if everyone progresses. And uh, as past president of the National Science Foundation, FCT, of a less R&D advanced country, Portugal, we strive to promote bottom-up and competitive open mechanisms to provide equal opportunities to all. And then we supported the pockets of excellence in their integration in European and global networks. We are well aware that the particular characteristics of excellence in networks as compared to individuals or institutions is that by pooling resources in a network, a collective excellence emerges that is more than the sum of its excellent participants and make everyone progress. Now, uh, at COST, so the European Cooperation on Science and Technology, an organization financed by the European Commission, it is a dream come true. As cost provides a unique platform where people and ideas can grow, contributing decisively to the internationalization process of the R&D communities and to significant scientific and technological breakthroughs in Europe and beyond. And the success factor, as you have asked, is that although being competitive in order to provide equal opportunities to all, cost leaves no one behind. Any scientist from any member country can join a running cost action. And on average, we have about 200 participants from many member countries in each cost action. And this allows for capacity building. An outcome of this mechanism uh, was the doubling of the Western Balkan countries' participation since the beginning of Horizon 2020. Capacity building and connectedness 
successfully prevented isolation, as seen in the case of Tunisia, one of costs near neighbor countries, whose research community has almost doubled the financial support received since 2014. So, connecting and sharing experience results in a win-win situation. Bringing together different research and innovation ecosystems has led to an increased knowledge exchange. And this is even more critical in the context of the complex situation we have been experiencing this year. We have evidence that taking on board ideas and approaches of different disciplines is a precondition to arrive at solutions for complex problems. This is why, and particularly motivated also by the words of the commissioner, that I am pleased to reiterate COST's commitment in promoting collaboration among all types of specialists, researchers, innovators, policy makers, civil society within its international networks of excellence. In fact, as a networking promotion mechanism, COST has been successful in connecting research and innovators since 1971 and has actively contributed to connect, to connect less and more research-intensive countries, while significantly contributing to narrow the innovation gaps in Europe. Cost networking promotion mechanisms might be regarded as an example, I believe as its activities not only promote connectivity and mobility, but also brain circulation. This has led to numerous impacts and successes proved by the participating researchers' satisfaction and important scientific achievements. I would like to specifically mention the role of cost as a pre-portal of other era funding schemes through its established networks. For example, spin-offs, proposals that came out of uh, cost uh, collaborations submitted to other parts of Horizon 2020 had a success rate of more than 35%. And this is almost three times more than a normal application. And as a dedicated R&I instrument for networking, cost has, helps to maximize the potential knowledge of ecosystems across Europe and beyond and plays an even more important role in the effort to realize Europe's full potential in research and innovation. So in conclusion, I am sure that Europe can rely on mechanisms such as those developed by COST during the last 50 years, which have proven to be successful to connect pockets of excellence, thereby contributing to the widening objectives of the EU. And, the, and because of this, we are motivated to expand our contribution in widening and to promote brain circulation with the Commission's ambition to revitalize the era and to continue to foster European research cooperation through an inclusive and bottom-up approach while leaving no one behind. So all the best. We really need research and we really need more Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Fehal, for this inspiring talk. Uh, Deputy Secretary General Mr. Raymond, your country has been the best student in class among the EU 13 member states in terms of successful pre, uh, participation in framework programs. Coming from Slovenia, I'm envious. What are, in your view, the key drivers for this amazing success story? And what are the challenges ahead? Thank you all. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Jana, for this compliment. I must say that uh, there are several other very good students in the widened class as well. Slovenia definitely is, and honestly, I think the world class is becoming stronger and stronger. For us, widening isn't just about research. It is even more about networking and knowledge transfer. Widening has given us the opportunity to develop our academic staff and raise the quality of our universities. And our top universities have always used those opportunities. I can say that research and research cooperation in widening framework is contributing also to increase the quality of higher education and workforce. I think one of the keys of our success has been that our national research policy has been strongly excellence-oriented and strongly competition-based, which is in good accordance with EU research policy. Our researchers are trained to compete, and they are really thirsty. 
We really need the framework program and we are motivated. Participating in the framework program has always been a, a must to be recognized as excellent also in our national level. Also, our research policy is actively supporting participation in framework programs. We have developed a broad portfolio of supporting mechanism to help researchers to apply for grants, to contribute it, uh, from, uh, with national funds to uh, bigger projects, and including uh, we are co-financing the position of scientific counselors in different ministries whose task is to set their sectoral R&D priorities as well as priorities in the framework program. And also, very important is the possibility to combine structural funds and the framework program. We very much hope that this possibility is also granted during the next period because structural funds have been a possibility to systematically reform our research and innovation system. And this has been consequently improved our capacity to participate in the framework program. However, we are, have a concern that current signs and plans and messages from structural funds are saying that uh, that is not uh, allowed to uh, in in next period to to support capacities of of uh, uh, capacity side of uh, uh, research system in the future finally i would like to point out that it is important to keep in mind that widening is a tool and not an end in itself. And the successful implementation of this sh tool should help member states to exit the status, status of widening countries and finish this class and school. So we should start talking more openly about exit strategies. I think that a future exit strategy should foresee a gradual exiting as exiting is never simple. During the first years of the joining with the non-widening member states, it is hard to be equal in, in the club of those with more research and innovation uh, advanced countries. A gradual approach can help guarantee that no one is left in between. After all, Europe can achieve its big goals only by mobilizing everyone which is actually the goal of widening. Thank you. Thank you, Indrek. Uh, let's take some uh, questions from the audience. Um, let's see, um, there's a comment, uh, there's a question by Jan Pamowski, Universities, the Foundation for Innovative Knowledge Communities. How can we enable researchers in Western Balkans to engage with Horizon Europe? I think this is a very good question to all of you. Uh, Commissioner Gabriel, would you like to start by addressing this one? Yes, of course. First of all, thank you very much, Jan, for your question. Um, that's a great occasion to talk about universities because we have even now a very good example how with our initiative of European University Alliances, we can exactly doing, do that, to bring together researchers with private sectors, with civil society, to work together in order really to promote our European universities of the future. And I think that it's a good example how excellence and inclusiveness, that's something achievable. Because actually we have 41 European university alliances and they are all a, a great example of, of this. Now the question on researchers and Horizon Europe, definitely we need to have some some other programs, some new instruments, because on one side it's good to continue with some of the good examples that we have with the teaming for excellence. It's always good to promote this with era chairs, with twinning. We have excellent examples, especially in Western Balkans, but now I think that we need to give something more concrete to our researchers. That's why, allow me one example. The last two years, we are doing now a pilot project and we would like to see 
if a researcher will decide really to make the research in the origin country if they receive an adequate funding to do this research. We have extraordinary results. We have people that express this wish to do this research, but that means that we need to assure the conditions to have this, this, this wish and to, to, to choose this option. So for me, it will be very important that it's our widening strategy. We can provide these kind of new instruments. On the other side, researchers are not alone. They are not isolated. We need to continue to promote the cooperation with the universities, with the innovators. That's why at the beginning I said it, it's very important this time to think about excellence and inclusiveness as an ecosystem, the two sides of the same coin. And for that, we would like to propose new actions. And I'm very glad that Professor Ferrao is with us because definitely we need to strengthen our course networking actions. You are doing a great job and we have very good examples. On the other side, we need to see how to open some of the closed networks or so-called clubs to these partners. So I think that we should dare and we should propose something new in order to allow these people to build capacities, to access to knowledge, to know how to experience, and in that way to give them a chance to show us their potential. Excellence, merit at the core of our policies, but we need to give access to this in order to allow everyone to achieve this excellent result. And that's why, for me, what it will be important is to follow all these different initiatives in full respect with the principles of our European research area. Because European research area, it's not only an initiative that we would like to mobilize and to, to incite our member states to do something more. It's about our researchers, it's about the knowledge. That's why I like very much the idea that was suggested even yesterday during our panel discussion on era hubs and how to build a network between those hubs. We need to establish close links between European research area and the European Innovation Council. It's time maybe to have a European innovation area. So I think that again, the main question is synergies, but this time in concrete terms. European universities, ERA, ERA chairs, teaming, cost actions. We have the system of the national contact points, but we need to strengthen this in order to assure that all national contact points are receiving the same information at the same time, and the quality of this information is same, and the quality of the advice is the same. And we know that is not already the case, but we have to work on this and after, of course, to have this kind of new instruments where we dare to do things differently. That's, for me, the innovative way that we need to promote. If you'd like not to repeat the same slogans, no one left behind, but only with thinking out of the box we can achieve it. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Gabriel. Commissioner Varely. What is, in your opinion, um, the, the right contribution to this sentence, uh, to this question? Well, um, I couldn't agree more. Coming from Hungary, uh, these are exactly the challenges uh, the Central and Eastern European countries are still facing. And uh, this is an even bigger of a challenge in the Western Balkans. So, as I said, I think that we have to create the right investment climate. And we can motivate the researchers if they see that their research will make it to the economy uh, quickly. So this is why we have to have uh, more innovative SMEs, that we have uh, more direct uh, link between the economy and the researchers, be they uh, public or private researchers, and also to create the right climate for innovation hubs. So it is through that that um, I would like to uh, put the basic conditions in place uh, through the economic development plan. But everything is, of course, in the hands of uh, my fellow commissioner. But we will be working on that together. 
Thank you very much. Professor Ferral, this is actually what you do. Are there some new initiatives within COST on how to improve and even more uh, contribute to engaging uh, the Western Balkans with Horizon Europe? Indeed. So I'm very motivated by the energy of Commissioner Gabriel. So, uh, in fact, uh, COST, uh, as you may know, is an association. And the Western Balkans are already member states from this association. And they have been, because of that, able to get the funding which comes from the Commission uh, and from Horizon uh, in a very effective way. So, for example, I've already participated in a conference of ministers of the Balkans and they were unanimous in um, highlighting the role of cost and of the networking for the research community and not only for the innovation in the Western Balkans. And I would like to highlight what the Commissioner has just mentioned. Uh, COST is now also developing new uh, mechanisms to promote innovation, which is to say, to take value out of the ideas that uh, came out of the COST actions. Uh, so we provide uh, an extra year of funding just to develop these ideas into business opportunities. And what I think we need at this stage, because I think the method is proven, this is a new uh, process. We certainly would make use of um, the more resources that I hope would be available for the widening and uh, so that the uh, cost would be a tool from the Commission uh, to really uh, spread even more these uh, networks. And I totally agree to make uh, value out of the research. And this is the new mechanism that COST has developed last year and which uh, we are very confident will contribute to reduce the innovation gap as well across Europe. Thank you very much. Indrek, if I may, um, I'll surprise you with a different question. There's a question by Anonymous here. Uh, what are the key success factors for, sus for, for sustainability of centers of excellence and of research infrastructures in widening countries? Now, you've set up some. Widening will not go on forever. So how will you preserve all these uh, in, uh, centers of excellence? Well, thank you very much for the question. Um, um, actually, our policy have, uh, has been that, that uh, every center of excellence should not be forever. So uh, we, we don't guarantee sustainability of every, every different center of excellence. But we try, of course, to maintain the system and, and to, to make possible to compete for every center of excellence for the next period. And we uh, are looking uh, uh, for different uh, possibilities to, to, to find the finances for them, of course, but we are evolving also the, the conditions. So, so uh, they are not remaining as they were forever. So, so it, they should also uh, evolve. But of course, uh, if we talk about research infrastructures, then it is a question of uh, uh, assessing whether they are working well, and if they are working well, then, then the state must fund, uh, fund them, and, and that is the, the answer. Thank you very much, Indrek. Uh, the last question will go to Ms. Gabriel. Uh, it's by Yona. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the need to retain local research and innovation talent in the widening member states. Do you propose new instruments for attracting foreign talent to these countries? Ms. Well, Gabriel. Thank, thank you very much, Ivona, for this question. First, not to retain, but to give them the option to choose to stay. We need to change our narrative. We need really to talk to our young people with huge respect, with their freedom of thinking about their future, making their own choices. And I think that we definitely we should insist on that. Of course, when we talk about innovation, we need to take into in consideration the local dimension. And by the essence, innovation is local. But this time, innovation is not anymore local. Innovation is global. And that's why, of course, that when we talk about having our researchers in their countries working in good conditions, 
having a clear idea what's about the perspectives of their careers, because we don't have that for the moment, that's always an interaction with partnerships, with other talents, and that's why, for me, Europe has this, this strength, not only to give hope to our talents to choose to develop their ideas in Europe, but to attract these talents coming with good, with bright ideas, and in that case, of course, it's since the beginning to interact, to help each other, to exchange ideas, and to scale with the knowledge of everyone, the good projects. That's why for me, one of the other questions that we already touched, nothing is isolate, isolated. Researcher, it's not anymore isolated. The center of excellence, it's not isolated. That's why we are talking about an ecosystem, but we are talking about infrastructures, that we are talking about partnerships, and that we are talking about synergies. That's why, yes, of course, in our Horizon Euro program, there will be new initiatives in order to bring more partners with us. I must say, at the same time, that we need like-minded alliances, allies, partners, maybe sometimes a smaller group of partners, but with which we are sure that we are looking at the same direction, we share the same values, the same principles, and we can accelerate some of the processes because we are together. So I think that sometimes we, we should have the courage to say, to say that. And of course, with Horizon Europe, with education, with innovation, will be there in order to create these synergies and to see how we can at least try to make things better than previously. Um, thank you, Commissioner Gabriel. I think we just have enough time for a last thought from each of the, uh, each of the panel member. Uh, Commissioner Vareli, what is your last take home message? is that uh, while we need to build the missing infrastructure that is necessary to develop the economy, we also have to develop the economy in the direction of a knowledge-based, future-proof economy. So the, Bal the Balkans has a huge potential to actually speed up uh, after the economic recovery, but we have to be there and we have to invest, invest, invest. Professor Ferrao, last thought, in one sentence, if possible. Well, I think we need to provide good opportunities for everyone. So the Europeans deserve it and need it. And of course, we need a stronger Europe. Thank you. Indrek. Well, I think that uh, Europe can achieve its big goals only when uh, Europe is mobilized, all of us, all of uh, talents, all countries, and the influence will be diffused also in all countries. And, and that is actually uh, where the uh, framework program is good, and that is actually why we, we need that widening part of it. Thank you, Commissioner Gabriel. Thank you Ask very minutes. much, Professor Kolar. Uh, just before the last sentence, one last example. When we talk about researchers and innovators, we talk always a little bit more about Horizon Europe, European research area. But please continue to pay attention to the activities of our European Innovation and Technology Institute, because we have great examples how, thanks to our community of innovation and, and communication, we can achieve things differently, because the approach is different. The added value of the approach is since the beginning to see how the civil society, together with private partners and public institutions, are working together. So that will be really my last message. Excellence and inclusiveness, that's the added value of the European approach about our next leadership in research, innovation and education. Thank you, Commissioner Gabriel. Just to conclude, we need a more competitive and more, also more inclusive Europe. Decreasing research and innovation gap will contribute to both. As Commissioner Gabriel said, we can strive if everyone progresses. The two are the, the two sides of the same coin. Thank you very much for everyone taking part. Thank you for panel. Thanks to the audience. Thank you. Thank you.